Other papers presented include community involvement in control of epidemic-prone disease and investigation of epidemics outbreak. In JOS, Paul Dama, NTA News. That's a wrap from... Thank you, Miriam. You're watching News Nationwide and time now to take some messages. And the news returns shortly. Nigerian Diaspora Direct announces its first investment summit in London on 28th and 29th June 2013. By creating a bridge between the Central Association of Nigerians in the UK and the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria, the NDDIS will help match investors with small and medium businesses across Nigeria. NDDIS presents viable enterprises to sources of funding and invites entrepreneurs, chambers of commerce, corporate organizations and state governments to to join this deal-making event, both the Ministry of Trade and Investment and the Nigerian High Commission to the UK commend this initiative. To join the Sweden and sponsoring state delegations, submit your one-page business summary for screening by Africa-friendly business investors. Submissions will be screened on a best-value basis. Register online at nddis.com or call NTA Enterprises, Sweden or NDDIS for more information. The annual Nupe Cultural Festival is here again. His Royal Highness, the Etsu Nupe Alaji Yahaya Abubakar, on behalf of other Royal Fathers of Nupe Land, Kodia invites the sons and daughters of Nupe Land and the general public to the 2013 5th Nupe Day Festival from 21st to 26th June. Friday, 21st annual lecture series at the IBB University Lapai guest speaker, CBN Governor Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, 22nd and 26th. The Etsu Nupe confers chieftaincy titles on some distinguished personalities. They include the Senate President, Dr. David Mark. Deputy Chief Servant, Niger State, Haji Ahmed Musa Ibeto, the Minister of State Power, Haji Zainab Ibrahim Kuchi, and the Director General, National Information Technology Development Agency, Professor Cleopas Sangaye. Others include Senator Abubakar Bukola Saraki and Haji Ibrahim Idris. The 5th Nupe Day Festival will also feature agricultural show, horse race under the Nupe turf, and presentation of merit awards. Chairman of the occasion, General Ibrahim Babangida, Royal Father, Sultan of Sakoto, Haji Muhammad Sa'ad Abubakar, Senator Ahmed Baba Zulu, Adams. NTA presents to the world a dedicated television channel to broadcast activities of Nigeria's Senate, Federal House of Representatives, and all the 36 state houses of assembly. You can watch NTA Parliamentary Channel on NTA Star Times DTT platform. NTA Parliamentary Channel. Join us. Nigeria. Good luck, Jonathan. NTA Language News showing on NTA Star Times platform 10 p.m. Monday to Friday, 10 30 p.m. Wednesday. If you see any person with this disease, contact the nearest health worker or clinic immediately or call Niger toll-free number. Call is free of charge. If confirmed, you will be paid a cash reward of 25,000 Naira. This message is from Nigeria Guinea Worm Eradication Program, Niger. We are still on to NTA Nationwide and the National Center for Women Development has commenced attending economic empowerment for women in the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory. Talatu Ezeweke reports that the program is under the NCWD intervention for year 2013. Over to Talatu. Tagged reducing poverty through skills acquisition, the acting director general of the National Center for Women Development said the Train the Trainer program aims at empowering women, especially at the grassroots. This, he noted, is a follow-up to the center's ongoing intervention program presently in three local government areas in each of the four selected states of Adamawa, Ekiti, Gombe, and Oyo states this year. 
Participants of this training will receive starter kits. The program is expected to yield retrofit results and high potential economic benefits for participants. The center is actually serving as a ground for mobilizing women for national development. The participants are trained on soap making, interior and outdoor decorations and food processing. We are learning different, different things. It tells us that we can start any business with a token if really we are serious minded people. I am going to empower so many women. In Abuja, Talat Izariki, NTN News. Former Commonwealth Secretary General Mekan Yoko has advised politicians against politicizing the current insecurity challenge confronting the nation. Chief Mekan Yoko was speaking at a 2013 public service lecture in Abuja, urged leaders of all political parties to support the federal government against terrorist groups in the interest of national security. Ifan Okafo reports that the theme for this year's lecture hosted by the Office of the Head of the civil service of the Federation is Nigerian public service in the age of open government giving voice to the people. Kanyoko said in playing its role as instrument of achieving open government, the civil service must serve as a symbol of a united and indivisible nation. He said to promote national solidarity and entrench democracy, politicians and leaders of thought must practice policy-based politics to address challenges facing the country rather than share quest for position and power. He regretted that the actions of those who politicize the current insecurity challenges may create a conducive environment for the activities of terrorists. In the United States after 9-11 in 2001, and in the United Kingdom after the July 2005 uh, bombing of uh, transportation, and in India after Mumbai bombing by terrorists, and even in Indonesia, all the political parties in these countries rallied, rallied round to support the government measures. Kaduna State Governor Ramalan Yero and guest speaker Professor Jide Balog. There must therefore be room for implementation of new ideas and methods of achieving positive results without jeopardizing set rules and regulations. The Nigerian state assures the citizen full and equal access to individual and civic rights. Where the people are left in the dark, while government carries on without reckoning with the wishes and opinion of the public, there is mass alienation and resistance to government policies and programs. The chief host and head of the civil service of the Federation, Alaji Buka Gunyaji, reacted to the issues raised by some public servants. What we do in the offices in support of our political uh, heads um, all the programs and policies that they came with, while translating them into implementable uh, strategies, we must make sure that that service is delivered. In Abuja, Ifan Okafo, NTA News. Drug trafficking is an organized crime that has constituted a major health challenge and assumed a global dimension. Here in Nigeria, it is estimated that the value of seized drugs in 2012 alone is valued at 33.1 billion naira. In the light of the 2013 International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking Celebration, the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, joins interagency collaborations to counter the operations of drug traffickers. Correspondent Obia Gele Egwoke completes their story. Dedicated June 26th of every year as International Day Against Drug Abuse, Illicit Trafficking through Resolution 42 and 112 on December 7, 1987. The theme for this year's Drug Day is New Psychoactive Substances with the slogan, Make Health Your New High in Life, Not Drugs. Analysis from the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime shows that nearly 200 million people are using illicit drugs such as cocaine, cannabis, hallucinogens, and hypnotics worldwide. Chairman National Agency, NDLEA, said Nigeria is making significant contribution in the fight against illicit drugs and has played a cardinal role in preventing the use of West Africa as a drug trafficking hub. If these drugs are taken in a vehicle to be transported to other commands, 
or other states, we intercept them and get them seized. To curtail these challenges, the NDLEA has made seizure of heroin and other drugs from Pakistan and other countries hidden in various objects. We go on campaigns. Now we have planned a campaign, for example, to cover the three states of Sokoto, Zamfara, and Kebi. The Nigerian Drug Law Enforcement says is determined to stay focused on their areas of strength, such as zero tolerance for corruption and improved international collaboration, as well as dedication to drug abuse campaign. In Abuja, Obiagili Ugoke. The Amalgamated Commercial Motorcycle Riders and Owners Association of Nigeria has called for transport policies that suit international best practices. This was at its 15th National Convention in Abuja, which caused the members to participate actively in nation building. Talatu Ezeruke reports. Established in 1999, the Amalgamated Commercial Motorcycle Riders and Owners Association of Nigeria, Akumran, coordinates and protects activities of members. The national coordinator, heavy truck comrade Suleiman Nzaiki, who was the guest speaker at the occasion, expressed happiness that the association has overcome its internal crisis and urged members to learn from the National Union of Road Transport Workers Developmental Programs. What I'm strongly warning these people they should not be drive and should not be drilled to terrorism simply because they, somebody is need favor from the people. We are seriously condemning those criminals that hide under the guise of our business to perpetrate criminal activities. All the speakers raised the need to engage its members for security information gathering and the provision of alternative source of income for banned Okada riders who constitute almost 80% of able youths in the country. I will employ the government in the area they banned, they should provide alternative like maybe tricycle for them and they will use it for their uh, livelihood. In Abuja, Talat Ezerike, NTA News. We are still on NTA Nationwide and Enugu Network Studio is our next stop. Chenedu is standing by with the details of science and technology workshop and also a situation report on Waterside Bridge. Chenedu, it's over to you. Thank you, Femi. Good evening and welcome. In furtherance of the pursuit for academic excellence, the University of Nigeria and Soka in collaboration with the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, has organized the Science Technology Workshop and Exposition to train and retrain science teachers and students. Correspondent Chimo Biwalt and Naji completes the story. The training at the is the first time it has been done in Africa. It is targeted at guiding academic staff in developing countries to the constant with potentialities of the newest mobile educational possibilities and the creation of scientific contents for mobile devices. Chairman of the occasion and Vice Chancellor of the University of Nigeria, Nsoka, thanked the participating UNESCO partners for their untiring efforts in taking science to the next level in the African educational system. He pointed out that the training will accommodate about 100 members of the academic staff, 85 secondary school science teachers, and 140 university students. We think they will be left behind. But fortunately, we have this uh, wonderful relationship with the world. The UNESCO director programs, Ms. Sakodatos, said the UNESCO partnership with the institution is to ensure that through the training, some teachers and students will be able to carry out experiments that will prove a solution to good drinking water for the country. Some participants at the science fair expressed optimism that the training will give them alternative ideas to problem solving. The event is aimed at raising the awareness of importance of science and technology training in universities and in meeting global challenges. From the University of Nigeria and Soka, Chimobuelta Naji, continues. Staff and students of the Federal Government Girls College, Oweri have been counting their losses following a heavy downpour that flooded the school premises 
and destroy their property, Norum Emecheta reports. As at the time NTA News visited the school, the flood has reduced. Areas affected by the flood include the school's perimeter fence, the staff quarters, and the students' hostel, where most of their belongings were destroyed. 45 students who were mostly affected are said to be those suffering from respiratory tract infection. Some of them were taken to the school's clinic, while others went to the Federal Medical Center over for medical attention. Efforts by NTA News to get at them failed as their parents were said to have taken them home. Those that uh, stayed in the night that uh, we couldn't uh, handle, we sent them home, called their parents to pick them for better management. The vice principal of the school said the school has not experienced this type of disaster before. The mistress in charge of the hostel, Mrs. Rosemary Nwachuku, and some of the students narrated their ordeal. When I came to my dormitory around 7 o'clock, started running. At a point, the flood from Akibe Road entered through the gutter that connects the school to Akibe Road and flooded the whole place. The two was over flooded, the two was entering apartments, second boxes, roads. Motorists in Aba have expressed fear of the possible collapse of the Aba Ekorebene Highway Bridge. Comfort Anyam reports that the bridge was constructed in 1984. River Bridge along the Bay Kotebene Federal Road is a major access in and out of the city. As a result, large number of vehicles, especially heavy duty trucks, always ply the road. 70-year-old Chief Emmanuel Epelulo, a native of Obohil, said the Aba Waterside Bridge was constructed by the federal government in 1984. This double no the federal government built this when we are now moving. Road users who alleged that the bridge is on the verge of collapse blamed it on the high rate of accident recorded on the bridge and the increasing volume of traffic on it. If you're on the top of the bridge, a big vehicle passing, you see that the bridge is shaking. However, they need to do fly over in this place because there are a lot of accidents here and there. At times, you see people. The structure seems okay. It's just at the surface that you probably need resurfacing. In Abba, Comfort Iron, NT News. Thank you very much. And that's where we'll uh, wrap it up from here in Enugu. News Nationwide continues from Abuja with Femi. Thank you, Chinedu. Nigerian American professionals have pledged to work with the federal government to transform the country in all sectors using global best practices. The Nigerian professionals made the pledge at a meet and greet forum in Abuja. Correspondent Gabriel Odo reports. For Nigeria to be among the world's top 15 economies by 2030, with a GDP of four trillion US dollars and an annual growth rate of above six percent, Nigerian American professionals say the culture of excellence and other strategic drivers of macroeconomic growth must be addressed. We have all come home to see how we can contribute our quota in order to make this nation a better place. When we go outside the shores of this country to study and gain experience, all of that will come to naught if you do not return home to share that knowledge, to share that experience in order to develop your own country. We believe that we can transform Nigeria so that we can begin to drive foreign investment into Nigeria. And we need to put the interests of the country far and above our personal interests. I'm passionate about continuing legal education about, you know, more training for lawyers. The Association of Nigerian American Professionals in Nigeria, ANAPIN, is made up of Nigerians who are citizens of the United States, educated and worked there, and are now returning home. In Abuja, Gabriel Udu, NTN News. Nigeria has called on the International Labor Organization, ILO, to address the issue of underrepresentation of member nations in various offices of international labor organization irrespective of size, color, or location. The Minister of Labor, Emeka Wogu, made a call at the General Assembly 
of the International Labour Conference of the ILO in Geneva, Switzerland. Correspondent Emmanuel Ayimiro reports. On absorption of office by the Director General of ILO, Mr. Guy Ryder, a year ago, one major focus of his administration is to reposition the organization for effective delivery of its mandate to member nations. As the organization takes steps to establish a central research department in the ongoing reform, which is to achieve effective use of human and financial resources to its members, Nigeria and the Organization of African Trade Union Unity wants an in-depth review of recruitment policies into ILO. While Nigeria supports the ongoing reforms in the ILO to help reposition the organization within a strong United Nations system, we wish to appeal for adequate and equitable regional representation and distribution of all resources, including the recruitment of personnel of the developing nations at all levels of the agency. Africa is, uh, is underrepresented in the ILO. We are talking about reforms, and Nigeria is also championing these reforms at the level of the ILO. We gives us a lot of prestige. I feel very proud that we have a Nigerian government that will come with a progressive policy to the international level and will be applauded. So we have to do a follow-up. As Nigeria takes the lead to canvas for more representation at the ILO platform, affected nations are eager to see the realization of the 2008 ILO declaration on social justice for fair globalization. From Geneva, Switzerland, Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTA News. In another development, the Nigerian embassy in China has described as worrisome, unfortunate, and also inimical to the nation's economy the attitude of some businessmen in China and other Asian countries. The deputy chief of Nigerian mission, Patrick Olusola Nadikwe, who said that this in an interview, lamented that patriotism does not matter to some of them anymore, but their economic interests. Let's join Adamo Sambo for details. Records show that the volume of trade between Nigeria and China currently stands at over $11 billion. Although this sounds encouraging, the Nigerian embassy in China is, however, worried over the connivance of some Nigerian businessmen with some Chinese manufacturers to undermine quality in favor of quantity just to maximize profit. The deputy chief of mission says Nigerian markets are therefore being flooded with substandard products owing to this development, and the country becomes a subject of ridicule. So disheartened. When I, any time I went to the market, it's like they had Nigerian standard being demanded for by Nigerians for maximization of profit. Mr. Onadipi, however, believes that the planned agreement between the Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, and its counterpart in China over standardization is a welcome development. When eventually we sign this agreement, that will take care of that aspect because it will send a signal to Chinese producers that Nigeria is no longer a dumping ground. When proper sanctions are put in place, then I think that will stop. The Nigerian embassy in China is also concerned over the involvement of Nigerians in criminal activities in Asia. Over 360 Nigerians out of the over 25,000 in China are now languishing in various prisons for offenses ranging from trading in hard drugs and internet fraud, among others. Four of them are already on death row while over 120 are awaiting trial. Those who are bringing drugs that are really in the majority and the trend is worrisome. All, in most of these countries where in Indonesia there are 22 on death row. So it's really a trend that needs to be looked into. The embassy, however, says the attitude of Nigerian students in China is fantastic. In Beijing, Adam Musambo, NTA News. Former South African President Thabo Mbeki confirms Nelson Mandela's health status, plus Brazilian President calls a cabinet emergency meeting amidst violence demonstration.